Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a Microsoft Excel video on some statistical functions. It's going to be kind of a long video because there's several types of functions to go through, and building the formulas and functions for them isn't easy. What I will do is I will take breaks between segments so that you can take a pause and come back, but it will be a long video. I'm really sorry. So what we're going to be working with here is a workbook of statistical functions. I've already built in the formulas, and we can look at them and then see how they're built. The longer ones are the ones that will give us a little trouble because they're very picky. And the good news is that this gives you some good practice, but you may not use all of these all of the time unless certain areas of the business that you go into requires it, at which time it's in the course of your training, whether it's in um, uh, accounting or whether you're going to be doing scientific related work or whether you're going to be doing some other type of financial work, um, those things will teach you more about what you need to know and what you need to ask, with Excel simply being the tool to help you do the calculations more quickly. But one of the difficulties with something like this is that a lot of folks don't know what any of these functions are for, and so there has to be an explanation in trying to pick out what is being asked. So let's get started. First, what we're going to do is we will take a look at some average functions. The average of a series of numbers, and then the average of a series of numbers when some of those numbers meet a specific condition. That would be an average if some numbers meet a specific condition. And then average ifs is if a series of numbers has a segment that meets more than one condition, and then it will average those numbers. So we'll take a look at those first three. Right now, we've got formulas in here, and average is the simplest one. Basically, simply select a range of numbers, and then you ask Excel to uh, average it. So I'm going to delete this formula, and then we'll build it. Now, the way I build formulas, if I don't already know off the top of my head what the formula is, is that I like to use the, and need to use, actually, the insert function. Now, you could do the insert function from this little symbol just to the left of the formula bar, which tends to be my go-to. Or you can go to the formula menu where you have the ribbon that has all sorts of things related to formulas and functions. A formula is basically just the formula of telling Excel to calculate something. Equals 2 plus 3, and then the answer you'll get is 5. A function is often somewhat more complicated, but it really is just formulas as well. However, Excel has created a library of basic functions and how they work so that you plug in the information you need, then uh, Excel could do the calculation for you. So they're called functions for that reason. They're predefined. And the function and builder is part of the insert function tool. So I'm consistently going to use the insert function to the left of the formula bar, but just for this worst one, I'll, the first one, I will, worst one, gosh, first one, I will go to the formulas and then insert function. And in here, you basically can look into the function library and search for average, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to click go. Now, what our goal here is we want to average the numbers in a table range of A4 through A13. Now, each one of these tables, I've already gone in. They're actual Excel table objects. So in the Excel tables um, design tab, I went in and I already assigned table names to all of these. They're usually things like TBL amount, TBL items. I could have just called them items or amount or whatever. Maybe that would make it easier. But in here, that's what you will see when the function starts working. You won't actually see a data range of like A4 through A13. You'll see a reference to what table it's in. But first, let's choose the average function. You can either select it once and click OK, or you could double click it. I tend to double click it, but we'll click OK here. And you'll get a function arguments panel here or a dialog box. And in here, all Excel wants to know is what are the numbers you want to average. Now, ideally, if you were just doing two numbers like 999 and 321, 
then you would get an average of those two numbers of 660. That's how this works if you're doing it on just straight numbers. However, if you're going to do it on a range of cells, you will actually want to se um, select those cells or the table or named data range that they are in. And a table name is like a named data range. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select these cells that I want an average of. And Excel tells me that it's the table amount. And then it shows me what those ranges are. Now I could delete this and just type in TBL amount and then hit tab. And it's not quite sure where in here it wants to go, so I still need to tell it this. And that's not helpful either. So, oh, I know what the problem is. I actually mistyped something here. So let's come back over here. I believe I have an underscore. There we go. So I misnamed that. I mistyped that, right? So with the proper name, then I all I needed to do was type it, and it didn't put that second brackets of amount behind it. I don't know why Excel does that. It's an AI thing, but you could just do it as simply as this. We don't need to type any other numbers because right now Excel knows the range of numbers it's going to average and it's going to give me this total. There we go. Next, we have average if. What is the um, average of numbers that are over 500? So this table would need to be looked at to see any numbers that are over 500 and then to average only those. And right now, the average of those numbers appears to be 800. So how did we get this formula? I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And let's go in and look for the average if. OK, average if, go. And we're choosing average if because we have only one criteria. So first, what is the range we're looking at? We're looking at the range, which is the table. Then the criteria, oh, and okay, and this value here, I should note that when you see it in bright red, it's telling you something's wrong, right? It's an error, right? Well, in this particular case, it's not that I've done anything wrong. It's that Excel can't tell from this range that I've selected what I want to do an average if of yet. And that's because I haven't say within this table, if some condition is true, then tell me the answer. I haven't given in a condition yet. So now I have to give it the con 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 criteria. The criteria is that I want greater than 500. So let's see what happens if I type that in and click tab. Excel will put quote marks around it for me. But this value doesn't change. Now, why is that? Well, it seems to me that most likely the reason is because Excel isn't able to then say, oh, you only want to look at this cell and this cell and this cell and this cell and this cell, especially since the table may not actually have those cells in order like this one. And because it can't parse down into the table and tell you in the function argument what those cells are, it will keep this value item up here. So don't let that freak you out as long as you see that a calculation is happening. So that's how we get this. Now third, let's take a look at the average ifs, and you'll see that this is kind of a long formula. So let's see if we can explain what's going on. First, you have to tell Excel that the, what range you're going to look in for all of your information. Then you need to tell it the two or more conditions you need it to look at. So in this case, we're looking at the whole table of values. And we're looking at values, which is the, this has asked us to look at cells E4 through E13. The values has only three numbers in it, right? We have to look at this whole table called values. And then within that table, we need to look at numbers that are over 55. And within that table, we have to look at numbers that are under 1,000. Now, you might be wondering, why does it have to express this twice? 
That's because this average ifs could be being done on a bigger table, and it could be looking inside of one range for the number over 55, and it could be looking inside of another range for a number under 1,000. So the formula is written in that way. It's not trying to be obtuse. It's trying to be specific. So in this particular case, let's see if we can write this from scratch. Now the first thing I'm going to do since I have a working formula is I want to keep this formula. And the way to keep a formula in Excel so that you don't lose it, especially if you're trying to troubleshoot, is to put a quote mark, a single quote mark in front of the equal sign. And what that does is that makes the formula a text object that shows you what the formula it is. But because you have this quote mark in front of the equal sign, it's not going to be able to calculate it. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this information, and then I'm going to just paste it over here a couple of cells to the right of the, um, the line of text so that I have it in case something goes wrong. But now what I want to do is delete this and see if I can do this for us while we're on a video. So I'm going to click into my functions and I'm going to make sure I look for average ifs with an S because we're looking for multiple criteria or conditions. I'm going to click go. I'm going to double click and here we are. So first we need to take a look at the range that all of this is going to come from. In this case, it happens to be a one column table. So I select that range. Now we have to look at the specific range of data that we're going to set the criteria or condition from. And since this happens to be a one column table, it's going to be the same range. Now we need to set what the criteria is. What is that? Well, in this phrase, it, we, we want greater than 55. So I'm going to use the greater than sign and type the number 55 and then click tab and Excel will put quote marks around it. Now I need to look for another criteria. I need to look into the same range for less than 1,000. So I need to come down here and criteria range 2, select this, and then I'm sorry I'm moving that around, but I do this all the time when I'm working. Look down here and verify that yes, I want less than a thousand. So I'm going to put the less than sign and one thousand and hit and uh, tab. Now I could continue adding criteria ranges and I'm not going to. I'm not, uh, <laughs> not. Don't want to torture anyone. But we have enough here. And basically, of this particular table, there are three numbers in it, and the number above fifty-five and below. 1,000 is number 57. There's only one number, so the average of itself is itself. So I'm going to click OK, and that's how we get 57. Now, if I were going to go in here and change the word false to 678 and change the word jambalaya into 22, then what would happen is this would change because it would be looking at five different numbers, and it would determine there were three of them seem to qualify instead of one, and then it would average 678, 57, and oh, I got 22 in there, so I got it twice, so I need to actually change that to 67. Okay, okay, there we go. 678, 57 is 67, and this would be the average of the two conditions. That's how that works. Now, that's not what I actually asked us to do in here, so I'm going to go back in here and type false where it was, and then jambalaya so that we have the accurate answer. So for the moment, that is what we're doing on average ifs. So digest it and take a breather. This next section, we're going to focus on counts. So we have four different count formulas we're going to look at. Count, which have, tends to be counting numbers of numbers. Count A is what you would use if you're going to count items of text. Count if would be if you're doing a number of something based on one specific condition. And count ifs, the multiple, would be looking at a count of something 
with more than one condition applied to it. So the count itself is pretty simple, and this one is being done based on the little table in G. And in G, there happen to be six numbers in here and four pieces of text. One of the text um, pieces reads the number one, but it's, it's saying one. It's not the actual number one. So we have only six numbers in here to look at. But this is a good one because you never know what you're going to get. So in here for count, and I think what I'm going to do just so I can um, not keep looking at something we've already covered, I'm going to hide what we've already done and I'm going to hide what we don't need to look at just yet. This will help, I think, make this a little tidier for us in here. All right, so the count. We're going to take a look at G4 through G13. Let's select the cell. We're going to click the function, insert function, type count. I hit enter, which is the same as go. Double click count. And what we need to do is look at the values. Let's see if we could do, do a table. Okay, so it's going to look within this table, all this stuff, and it's going to indicate that the Oh, I, I chose the wrong table. See, this thing's going to happen. So like, no, I don't want the values table. I wanted the G table. So we're going to come in here and we're going to move down here, select all of this. And there we go. And now we have six. Click OK. Because what it did is Excel looked at column G's table of counts and found that there are six numbers in there. So it counted there are six numbers. Now we want to do the same thing regarding text. So this one here is looking into the C column, which has got only text in it, and it's providing 11. Now, why is it doing that? Because in here, we're thinking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, in this case, the table itself, including its header row, is, is full of text. So it's counting the header row. So in this case, I would come here and I would delete this formula so we could try it. Function manager count A. And then we will do the same thing we did with just the count, but we're doing it with a, a, a table of text. So I'm going to select this and we get 11. That simple. I wish they were all this simple. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to look at a little bit more of a complex table. And in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to narrow these up a little bit so we can make sure we can see this whole little table easily. I3 through N13. And within that table, we want to count the number of times Sandy appears in this whole table range. So the formula would be to do a count if we would look at the table and we would look for Sandy. So let's delete this and give it a try. Count if go. Now we're going to look at the whole table We'll select the whole table, or in this case, if you really didn't feel like doing that and you happen to know the table is called TBL underscore sales, you're going to still get this value here, like we did on an earlier um, count, excuse me, on the average if and the average ifs. You get this value, again, because Excel doesn't know what the criteria is yet, so it can't tell. So the criteria is going to be Sandy. And Sandy appears in this table only twice, and we get the response, too. That's how that works. Now we get to one that's a little bit longer and a little bit more complicated. We want to look inside the same table and we want to make a determination of 
the quantity being over a hundred and the price being exactly $9.99. So in this case, we're looking at the whole table range, but we need to look at very specific things. So let's see if we could build this from scratch. Insert function, count ifs with an S. Okay, now this is interesting because here it's not actually asking for the whole table. It's asking for the criteria range and then the criteria. So, you know, in my first thing, I'd be tempted to grab the whole table, but that's not what we want. What we want to do is we want to look at the number of films, which would be the quantity, and then we would want to look at the price. So first, criteria range will be quantity. And then the criteria is, what was the criteria? It is greater than 100, so greater than sign 100. And of course, right now we have the value up here because we're not finished with the formula. We need to look at the criteria range number two, which is the price. And in there, we want to look at the price of $9.99. Now, this may or may not work right. Here's why. It did. I did not actually expressly put an equal sign in in front of it to say it's equal to $9.99. But let's see. Either way could work. But in this case, it's better to just make sure that if you're doing greater than, to always use the greater than sign. If you're doing less than, always use the less than sign. And if you're doing an equal to something, always use the equal sign. In this particular case, because this is a criteria and it's inside of quote marks, it's not conflicting with the actual formula equal sign that tells Excel we're doing a formula. And as you can see here, even though these two items still remain as the so-called value error, they are not an error. They just can't write out in Excel exactly which cells are and are not being considered and you know, so that's why this is. Don't worry about this when you see that, in fact, a calculation is happening. So now you've got a little overview on counts. Go take another breather. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the sum related functions. Sum, sum if, and sum ifs. Sum is just the adding up of a bunch of numbers, whether it's in a range of numbers or whether you're typing in the numbers from you know, scratch. Sum if would be adding a number, adding some numbers that fit a specific condition. And sum ifs, the plural, would be adding a sum of numbers or you know, doing an addition of numbers that meet two conditions or more. So the first one you will have seen in basic mathematical. So I'm not going to take a, a mathematical uh, calculations. So I'm not going to take it apart. This is looking at cells L4 through L13, and that would be this price here. So this is the sum of these prices. And in this particular case, the number hasn't actually been formatted, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in as currency with no decimals, but it's the same number. Now, sum if, what we want to do is add the number of sales that Shannon made from this table. So let's go ahead and take a look at this formula. So first we have to look at the salesperson area where Shannon is, and then we need to look at the quantity of sales that she made, not the price, but the actual number of things she made. So we're looking at two criteria. We're looking at the sales salesperson for Shannon and then the sales quantity and in, in the average, uh, the, the sum will be done based on that. So let's see if we could take this apart. And just in case I mess it up, I want to make sure to put a quote mark, single quote mark in front of the formula that I have that works. Copy it and then put it over here in case I need it again. And then I'm going to delete it where it's at so we can try it. Open the insert function, and I want sum 
if go. And what I need to do is look for a range and then a criteria and then the sum range. So this is interesting because I again think I would be looking at the whole table. But I'm not. I'm looking at the range that I'm going to set the criteria or the condition in. Looking for Shannon. It's Shannon, right? Yes. So I need to choose the range of salesperson. And then the criteria is Shannon. And then from there, I need to, well, what am I going to sum up? I mean, now that I know that I'm looking for Shannon, what about Shannon am I going to sum up? So the sum range is going to be quantity. And here we go. We look in the salesperson for Shannon, and we get the quantity of sales that she made. And there it goes. So in that particular case, we didn't need to keep this formula over here. So I'm going to get rid of this. And make sure I get rid of that orange cell, too. And now we could focus on some ifs. Some ifs will also be working with this table, but now we're going to be looking at the prices of only DVD types of films and only the DVD types of films that are good quality. Then we want to sum the prices of only those. So if we were actually looking over here, we would be looking at this DVD good quality and we would sum that with, let's see, this DVD, that's not good quality, that's new. This DVD is fair quality, not new, or not good. We want this one, so we'd be summing this and this most likely. And then we'd also be looking at this DVD that's good and summing it with this. So we probably are trying to get this formula to sum up this $9.99, this $10.56, and this $18.99 from inside this table. That's what the sum ifs is supposed to do for us. So the formula is nice and long, oh my. So once again, instead of trying to explain it, let's just make a save it with the little quote mark in front of it. I'm just gonna save it without the color. And I'm gonna come over here and paste it in case I need it to figure out what I did wrong because invariably I will do something wrong. And then I'm going to delete it from here. And we're gonna do a sum ifs. Sum ifs go. All right, sum range. Let's grab the whole table. Then we need criteria range. And the criteria range is the type. And then the criteria is DVD. Now we need the criteria range, which is quality. And the criteria two is good. And then, as you can see in here, we have the red value error because Excel is not able to tell in this preview what it needs to be calculating. But let's see, why is nothing happening? I haven't hit tab yet. Okay, there we go. So now let's see what we get here. Okay, we get a value. So I want to go in and find out what I did wrong. So the sum range, I was trying to do the whole table and that is probably not what I need. What is the sum range? The sum range would be price. Ah, see? So, <laughs> and as I say, it's these little mistakes that help me learn and help us learn. So it's trying to determine what exactly is Excel asking you to put in here. And this is where the, the calculations gets a little tricky. It didn't want the whole range of the table. It wanted to know what you're actually going to sum up and then what the criteria ranges you were going to use to impose conditions before you could sum this up. And that's how we get this. So that is our little coverage of sums. Go take another breather.
Okay, this is the final segment of our slightly long video. This one's a bit more of a mixed bag. None of the formulas in here are that tough or complex, so we'll just kind of go through them. What I did is I already went and I made a copy of the formulas over here and then emptied them out here so we could just practice making them from scratch. So in this particular case, we're going to use the round up and round down. Rounding up and rounding down will actually round up or round down an actual number. Now, what do I mean by that? We can come over here to say cell L5, and it's $12.99, and it's just as easy as pi to round it up, right? We just go ahead and remove the decimal point, and it's now $13. But that's only appearance-wise. The actual number is still $12.99. What if we want to actually round the number up? Now, this is useful, and I'm going to go ahead and make this back to 1299 like that. This is useful usually if you've got like a long column of numbers and you want the actual numbers to be rounded up. It's also the round up and round down and other round functions can be useful as part of a longer, more complex formula. So you may be making a formula where you're doing two or three things and then you want the response to be rounded up or rounded down. So um, that's, that's why that works. But we're just going to do the simple thing here. What we want to do is take a look at cell L10. L10. There we are. And we want to round this up. So let's go ahead in here in our um, actual formula cell of B25. Let's run the function and type round up. And then we just want to do the number. So we want cell L10. I'm going to just type L10 tab. And then the number of digits. And I want it to be 0. And it will round up to 11. And there we go. Now round down works exactly the same way. We'll just come over here and we'll do round down. And we'll go like O, K, or go. And in this case, we want cell um, L11. And then again, 0, and it will round it to 11. That's why you get the same answer for both of these for two different cells. <laughs> All right, min, max, and median. Actually, um, we have a worksheet over here where you'll get to use a little bit more of this, but I will leave this to you to do on your own when you're going through the book, but this gives you a start. So we want to take a look at the minimum number that appears in a given range of numbers. And in order to do that, you would need to select the range of numbers and then apply the min function to it. So in this case, we're going to look at A4 through A13. So we're going to come here and open up the insert function, type min and get the function. And then what we want to do is we want to look at this range and the minimum number in it is 100. We want to do the same thing for max. Now interestingly I could go into the function manager, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this formula and I'm going to paste it into the max. Only in this case I'm going to type the word max and then it and the maximum number is 1,000. So that's with some of the simpler formulas you can do that. With median, we'll just go back in and we will look at the insert function, type in median, and then we will look at these numbers and click OK. And the median number is 475. And that's because these numbers aren't all like 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, then you'd think it'd be 500, right? But it goes like 250, and then we've got 550, and then we've got 950. So that's where the calculation comes in. This is something where you could type in um, the, the function um, for, for, for now, the current time and date. Or we can just come up here and say, type in now. And it needs no arguments. It doesn't need you to click anywhere. It just fills it in for you. Same thing with today. You could come up here. Well, let's take a look at this formula. This is equals now, and then there's no arguments. But the formula 
requirements. Needs excel to think there might be arguments. It's just part of the standard way of expressing this. So if you were trying to express now without that, Excel would get confused, even though there's actually nothing in these parentheses. Now here, with this in mind, equals now in the parentheses, one could type in equals today, and then the open close parentheses and get today's date. There you go. So with that, I think you've got a good handle on some basic statistics. When you work on this in the textbook, you'll have an additional area where you can follow the same kind of instructions and uh, uh, have some fun with it. It's nothing terribly hard in here. You can email with questions. But uh, I hope that this was an informative, if a little bit long, uh, video for you. <laughs> Thank you very much for sticking with it, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what